important factors of the marathon running is so many people think right away about the training, like the, the mileage on their legs and their feet. Mm -hmm. But being a runner myself and also a dietitian, I know how important the nutrition component is. And, and so it's crucial. It's so important that people feel their bodies during the whole training process and then also during the race and then after the race. And so a large part of my career, I've been helping either people physically get across the line by running next to them or helping them nutritionally. So when it comes to brain health and just gut health with running a marathon, I know with Rolf, he plans to be out there for probably close to six hours. So it's really important that we are able to have him practice with the nutrition now um, when he's relaxed, because I'll tell you what, the day of Boston he is not going to be as relaxed as he is during training. And so I'm learning about, um, you know, as I've helped different people, some people have really strong guts. Um, they're able to tolerate anything. Like I have a good friend. We train. She can run a half marathon. She ran her first marathon next to me and she could eat anything, any gel packs, drinks. Me, that doesn't happen. Okay. So it's so important that, first of all, like brain health, yes. If you want to fuel your body, it's kind of like a car. I like to compare it to a car. So you can put any type of fuel in your car and your car will run, mm -hmm. but your car will run more efficiently and it will run um, probably, what do you want to say, more miles and um, less maintenance down the road if you put the right fuel in. And so the first thing that happens is our brains take up a lot of our fuel. And if we're not fueling our bodies correctly, um, I've run a marathon, my first one where I was very young and I didn't eat correctly. And I was 22 then. And I remember waving and going through the streets like this. Um, it's so important to have enough fuel. So carbohydrates, mm -hmm. protein, and fats throughout mm -hmm. the entire um like race throughout mm -hmm. training. And so that's a big thing we're going to do. Ralph has come to me because he has had experience with marathon training. I think that's what really, really um, unites us because we both love running and we both have run marathons and we've both run the Boston and that's not to break. You have to find, he had to find someone that's run the Boston. It's a very grueling course. Um, he loves it, which is really, really good. So this will be my first time helping someone in this age group get across the finish line. So, you know, yeah, you think, oh, he thinks, well, I used to run three hours. But to me, it's more my job to help him because it's going to take him five to six hours. So he'll be out there longer. So to me, it's even more important, his nutrition plan mm -hmm. and to keep his, um, you know, his, his brain, everything healthy and running so that he can make good decisions while he's out there. There's simple carbohydrates and then there's complex carbohydrates. And one of the main handouts, the main um, things we're going to work on together are the macronutrients. And I believe we just touched on that. Um, I have so far with Rolf, but I like to tell people, and I, I told him that you want to have carbohydrates that are wrapped in fiber. And I love saying that. Mm -hmm. So I'm not against all carbohydrates by any means, but if you want the healthiest fuel, we're looking at things like whole grains, like whole oats and brown rice and barley. And, um, and certain things are going to be able to be tolerated with, with his gut. Other things, maybe not so much, um, but we'll figure that out together. Mm -hmm. Bread and pasta can work into definitely a runner's plan for a marathon. Mm -hmm. um, legumes, which include lentils and peas and beans and soybeans and peanuts. Um, we also are going to talk about berries. And so that's a low sugared fruit. Um, you know, as I've aged, my gut is actually able to tolerate a bowl of oatmeal with peanut butter in it and blueberries. And that's what I eat before I go out for a run. No GI problems at all. Okay. So we're, again, we're going to find what works for him. And then just a couple more complex carbohydrates would be like red lentil pasta, chickpea pasta, popcorn, kidney beans, um, and then all vegetables pretty much. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So he is someone we've already started talking about the importance of more nutrients. Um, mm -hmm. He was, he's just such a good client because he just does whatever I ask. And he completely filled out a journal for a couple of weeks. And I learned so much about, about him for him filling that out. And it also mm -hmm. showed me that he wasn't just contemplating this. He is ready for change. Mm -hmm. So you know what? We realized his breakfast is extremely lacking because he's been doing both, um, 
intermittent fasting and also a keto way of dieting. Mm -hmm. And I'm not opposed to those options. If he would like to do that for his body, I was very upfront and honest that I'm much more comfortable teaching someone that wants to run a marathon with carbohydrates over more of a fasting or keto. So he might go back to that in the future, but who, and is that something that he, you're going to help him to incorporate into his run? Oh, Kelsey, I wish so much because it is so easy. (laughs) The thing is when you go to these marathons, I'm already, that's on my list to do. I'm going to, I'm not telling him, but I'm calling Boston or I'm going to look it up. They'll tell me what Gatorade or what sports drinks they have. So I, if I'm traveling marathon, will know, like he, he'll know, like if he can tolerate it and then he can get that brand and practice. Mm -hmm. Some of my clients in the past have had like red. He Mm -hmm. says he can tolerate most. He can tolerate the yellow one. What if he gets there and then it's not the yellow one. So drinks and he's going to have to know like, one cup of water, one cup, like he'll know at each rest stop what to take. Mm-hmm. So there's a lot of prep here, a lot of prep, yeah. especially because, yeah, I start, it is like a, yeah, there's a science to it and um, there's going to be a, a strategy. And I also, because he's never run, well, I don't know how, how long it took him at 72 years. So I should ask mm-hmm. him that. What a full accomplishment. Yeah. Unbelievable. Is that, you? so you had mentioned macronutrients. Does, is that involved in the calorie tracking? I'm assuming yes. That is a great question. So because I am working with um, such a brilliant mind in Rolf, mm-hmm. but he is a physician background, I had to physically show him his TDEE. Now I know this gets a little technical, but <laughs> TDEE okay. stands for Total Daily Energy Expenditure, TDEE. And so a lot of times I know looking at, I've done this a long time. I know people are under eating, but once I show them their TDEE, it takes into account their height, their weight, their age, and their activity level. It will give me a calorie level of where they should be. Mm -hmm. He was flabbergasted by that number. It was much higher than what he had been eating. So Mm -hmm. then I take the calorie amount. Too many people, including runners, um, concentrate on how many calories. That's Mm -hmm. just one number. To me, I take the calorie level now. Now I break it down to your three macronutrients. Mm -hmm. So carbohydrates, protein, fat. And this is what he's working on now. So Mm -hmm. I gave him, like, here is what you would need to eat just to maintain your current weight. I mean, he's not a large man. Mm -hmm. Um, I think he was eating like 1,300 calories one day, 1,500 another. Just to maintain, he would need 2,100. Then we're going to increase his mileage. Now, I know that's just one day or two days a week where he does the longer runs. So I'm not saying he has to overeat, but during this period so that he doesn't break down, so he doesn't get injured and the macros, the protein amount is extremely important to keep his body and his muscles recovered. We all know as we age, recovery takes longer. Um, so especially for him, I want to make sure that he's hitting those, those uh, specific macro amounts. Him, I said, um, Ralph, it's the difference of like running, kind of jogging down the steps the next day versus uh, uh, we've all done it. Okay. We've all had marathons where we can barely walk and we had marathons. We feel pretty good the next day. You're going to be sore. It's a marathon. But for me, and I think I've encouraged him, most every marathon has its chocolate milk. So recovery is important and he may be against dairy and he may, but it is the simplest form of carbohydrates, uh, potassium, protein, um, liquid after marathon. Now, um, I'm not sure yet if he can tolerate like whole food or food after training. Some athletes cannot, otherwise they can go and get a good healthy snack. But when you're at the Boston and you're in the middle of nowhere (laughs) and you're big, you know, so he said chocolate milk. I'm like, yes, you will recover so much quicker. So I want him to practice this also during his um, training runs. And I know, so a family member has reached out too, and they're concerned with his recovery after. Um, So I'm going to get him on a protein type, you know, shake or supplement so that he gets about 25 grams of protein in after that training run. And then he could still eat a good meal when he gets back home. Meal planning for whether it be a marathon runner, anyone, it is such an individual um, thing to do. And I've, I've done a meal plan for one person in my entire career. I think mm-hmm. it took me 70 hours to do one week because you have to ask them what they're going to eat. So there are some wonderful resources out there. And mm-hmm. I'm definitely going to share these with Ralph. And one yeah. of them is the eatingwell.com. Mm-hmm. They have meal plans for the Mediterranean diet. They have meal plans. 
So when it comes to cooking at home, um, I think Ralph maybe doesn't want to do a whole lot of cooking at home now that he cooks alone. I hear that all the time. It's very different when you have to cook for yourself. So, you know, part of him recording his intakes, he was wonderful. He brought in some of the labels and I was able to see some of the foods that he is eating. And so I'll be able to guide him with healthier choices of foods, <clears throat> excuse me, that do come from a box. So I'm going to give him some recipes and menus um, that are really appropriate for athletes. Otherwise, you know, he could make three or four servings and just freeze it for nights that he's tired and things like that. So cooking, it doesn't have to be complicated, but I do know it's different when you are like going from two to one or you had a large family. Now you're cooking for yourself. Assignments was to make sure he had protein and color at every meal and every snack. Um, he asked, do I need to eat snacks? No, not if you're not hungry, but you know, protein and color and he's not going to eat Skittles or M&M's. So of course I'm talking about fruits and vegetables mm -hmm. and, um, you know, getting in all the antioxidants because we are in the sick time of year and he's trying to train during the, one of the most difficult seasons where lots of sickness happens. Mm -hmm. So getting in all his fruits and vegetables are definitely going to help him fight off mm -hmm. any type of sickness. Mm -hmm. So he can stay healthy and train. A protein smoothie is really a phenomenal idea for anyone that doesn't like to eat breakfast. And so with Rolf, I know that he was a kind of a V8 person in the morning. Um, and so this might be a nice option for him to just go to a protein shake. We can find a whey-based if he tolerates dairy. Otherwise, we can do a hemp-based, which I highly recommend, a hemp-based or pea protein-based mm -hmm. supplement that he could put in with fruits, vegetables, spinach, whatever he wants. Um, some of my clients or runners will use like peanut butter, bananas, but that will get in calories quickly. And we know that we digest um, calories from a liquid a little bit easier than solids. So it's definitely something that I'm going to offer to him for breakfast. He could do it some days for breakfast or even after his run training runs. If he doesn't want to use, you know, a protein powder per se, he can make his own as well. Um, <clears throat> the research shows that when we take a drink like this, we don't feel as full. Um, so people tend to eat just as much, but in his case, that's okay. Cause when he's not trying to lose weight, we're trying to get enough calories in for his training. Mm -hmm. So it's just something to think about um, when it comes to like protein smoothies and that. Mm -hmm. I do think that is a great idea for him because mm -hmm. like I said, he's just used to drinking something and heading out the door to do his workout. 